So I have a feeling that this studio vlog is going to be very 3D printer oriented. I know that you guys have been super interested in my 3D printer setup. Um, it is new and I haven't really had a chance to talk about it and of course it's very interesting technology so I can definitely understand the interest. So I will definitely be going into that but mainly I figured this week would kind of be very 3D print heavy um, because I'm not exactly sure what else I'm doing other than monkeying kind of with things like this. The main thing I really want to get done this week is actually fully setting up my Raspberry Pi. Um, I will talk about that more when I'm doing stuff, but I have it kind of like a, in its case. I have my Pi camera and the ribbon cable um, in its little... Um, case that I printed uh, on a tripod uh, that's to monitor the things but I do need to set that up um, mainly because I'm going to start printing a whole lot of costume parts for Star Wars Celebration so I want that done this week but the first thing on my agenda is actually going to be getting these um, hooks set up. So right now I have like no good setup for all of the filament um, this is just one of them. I kind of have filament spools all over my closet and there just keeps on ending up being more and I'm running out of room and they're just not very um, conveniently organized right now. Like there's some down there, there's like one in a box there, there's one in a box here, then there's just random spools different places. So I found these um, hooks on Amazon. They're like normally I think for like towels. Um, they're stainless steel and they fit absolutely perfectly um, on these spools. So I'm gonna put those up in the closet and then yeah hang up the filament. They're actually gonna go on this wall because they actually fit perfectly here. So yeah I'm gonna get those hooks up and then show you how things are looking. And here's how things are looking. So as you can see, I got the four hooks up there, and yeah, that's definitely going to help the filament situation out a lot. Um, the only slight issue, which isn't really an issue, is um, lots of the spools that I have are these really um, small hole ones, um, and the ones that have the larger holes are a little thicker. So as you can see, these ones fit in um, on the post perfectly. These ones are aren't quite there, um, but they still work great. So yeah, super happy with that. That isn't all of my filament, um, but the other stuff that I kind of have is more like specialty that I wouldn't necessarily have out all of the time. So that's definitely going to be a super helpful because like this is like kind of my printer station. I guess I'll just show you since I'm gonna be talking about the printer and stuff. So this is just like a drawer um, thing from Ikea. This is a microfiber uh, cloth that I wipe my printer off on. And then in here, there's just kind of the different tools and stuff. So this is like the most used drawer. It has the snippers um, for like cutting the filament and the nozzle cleaner in there. Um, and then down here, there's like the extra parts that came with it, the Allen keys. Um, there's more hex keys down there. Glue sticks, which I don't actually need because it's a heated bed, extra Teflon tube, all of the like extra stuff that came with my printer. Now as for the actual printer itself, um, because I've never had a chance to actually talk about this in a video, it is a heavily modified Creality CR10S. So I will talk about um, what I've done, but um, I also made this plexiglass kind of it's not really an enclosure. It was mainly to push my cloak back and also protect it, but mainly to push it back because it likes to like hang out, obviously, because gravity, it, it's very full. It's a very full cloak, so it does did like to hang over. So that's kind of its main purpose, although it will protect like if I have any like mega filament um, <laughs> explosion or whatever on this thing, like something fails and I don't catch it fast, it will definitely protect it from like filament going everywhere. But yeah, I'm not sure this probably isn't like helping the temperature stay stable or anything going up. Um, I'm not planning on ever printing ABS, so that's not going to be an issue. But 
what I have done to this, other than I guess the main thing you can basically see is I've changed out the print bed. I um, decided to buy, um, this is like one that Creality makes, it is like a textured piece of tempered glass um, to, it's essentially designed to help the plastic stick to the bed better. Um, normally it's just a piece of glass. Um, lots of people used mirrored tiles, but I decided that I would try this. Um, I figured it would also look, because it's black, um, it would also look good for filming because any if I want to do any time lapses or whatever, I figured the mirrors would kind of be a little too trippy um, for things. Uh, the other thing you can actually physically see that I've changed are the feet. So I decided to put some squash ball feet on um, to replace the actual ones. Um, basically I wanted to try and minimize the vibrations and sound of this as much as possible and that's kind of one of the most common um, fixes that you can do. And the other main thing that I did, although you can't really see it because it's normally in, it's pretty internal, is I actually replaced all of the fans except the power supply. Um, so I have made this thing um, really quiet compared to what it was. You can kind of see this one. So yeah, just welded on new, um, not welded, uh, <laughs> soldered together um, new fans, like completely silent fans um, for the whole printer. So that was this one and then two to inside. I also put um, motor dampers on um, the X and Y axis. So they're kind of back there and that made them super quiet. So I would say that if you have this printer or a printer that you want to um, help the sound with, the motor dampers possibly did the most. Like the fans were definitely quite loud, but as far as the noises that the printer itself makes, those motor dampers definitely helped a lot. But yeah, that's kind of the rundown of the printer and the setup. That's just kind of a catcher that I have for filament pieces and whatever, um, because they just kept on going everywhere. So I put that in there and then that's the scraper. So yeah, that's what the uh, printer setup is looking like right now. Obviously, I don't have the Raspberry Pi set up yet, but that will be hanging around in here eventually as well. Oh, and I forgot, um, although I have shown this in a video before, I added um, LED lights around the frame and put them on a smart plug so I can remotely turn them on and off. So when I check in on my printer with my Raspberry Pi and camera, it um, if it's dark in here, um, because it is a closet and I'm obviously not going to have this light on all the time, I can just turn on the LED strip and we're good to go. Um, other than it just looks really good for filming any kind of time-lapse stuff as well. But yes, now that is the actual full printer setup we've got going on. So as you can probably tell from that last clip, I uh, got a bit sidetracked, um, but what you just saw printing was this Echo Dot um, wall mount. Obviously I'm in a bit of a DIY mood today, um, but mainly I kind of randomly came across that because what I was actually looking for is when I was putting the, um, you know, the filament on the wall. I thought for a second, um, like when I was trying to figure out the configuration, like whether they should all be like straight um, four in a row or whatever, I ended up seeing if they would fit over here, which sadly they were just a touch um, too uh, wide to fit between the uh, window trim and the corner. But what I did finally remember was that my Electro Ripper over here, which has just been sitting in this corner for 
way too long. Um, I actually always planned on 3D printing or trying to find a stand similar to how my lightsaber over here is hung up um, on the wall. Like it has a base that is on the bottom and then there's a clip on the actual lightsaber blade and that's how it is mounted to the wall. And I was planned on when I finally got a 3D printer that I was going to try and make something for this Electra Ripper. And yeah, I finally remembered. And so when I was looking for different types of wall mounts, I came across the Echo one, which is why I printed that. I printed it first because it was going to take the longest. Um, because what I am actually printing for this, which I'm trying out my silver filament, it's technically supposed to be a fire extinguisher um, holder but it had a customizable feature where you could change the diameter um, of the things. So I'm test printing essentially one that is nine centimeters to see if that works for the bottom and also just generally to see if it's strong enough. And then I um, printed a clip to actually go around this part of the handle, although I might also put a second clip kind of like on this part of the um, post as well. So yeah, I just thought I would share that and um, update you with what uh, is going on. But while well, that's printing, because um, that's going to take like four-ish hours, I'm going to actually attach the Echo Stand um, just kind of right here. Um, because this, like right my Echo Dot is back there. Um, and when it's like, it sits on this Alex, which is pretty high up. And when I'm sitting over there working, I can't see if it's like recognize my voice. Um, it's just kind of a bit too high. So putting it on the wall solves that problem. So yeah, just gonna mount it there and, and get that hung up. And there we have it. That is now on the wall. And now I just have to wait for the other mount to finish printing. So the brackets finished pretty late last night, so I didn't have a chance to do anything with them, but I have them already on the wall, so I thought I would show you since I realized I actually didn't before I went ahead and actually installed them. So this is what we're working with. That is the one clip and then the bottom one is down there. Um, actually, this top one is so strong that I think it could pretty much have held the Electro Ripper's weight all on its own, um, but I already had that printed, so that's just going to go down there for security as well. But as I'm sure you can tell, I decided to move the Master Sword um, from here, just because the Electro Ripper is going to take up more of this space and look really awesome here. And, you know, the, the thing did technically win an award, so it should probably be in the main room and not tucked away in the closet. So I'm not exactly sure what um, I'm going to do with that Master Sword. But yeah, these clips worked out great. They were the perfect size. The only thing I had to do was I had to put a piece of wood behind this one um, just because on here it like has things that stick out a lot and for some reason the bottom didn't need it, but the top did. So I guess I'm just going to put this on here. I had it so that there, that's how it goes. Yeah, perfect fit. I decided to put the um, clip so that it would hit just underneath the leather cording, just so it is something that keeps it there a little bit better. But yeah, that is an absolute perfect fit. And as you can see down here, um, the bottom might have been a bit big, but uh, the thing does fit underneath it well. So yeah, I'm not sure if the smaller size would have actually fit. So yeah, that's what that's looking like. Super happy that I finally have that on the wall now. It's been a couple days since I have last vlogged, but the other night I finally got my Raspberry Pi and Octoprint set up. And oh my god, it is amazing. So, as you can, I mean, the setup's not that much different. I just have my printer is now plugged into my Raspberry Pi, and then I have the Pi camera set up on my little tripod that is, of course, shooting at the printer, which as you can see right now is working. So I'm going to show you what this whole setup kind of does. I really should be screen recording right now, but this is just going to be easier um, and 
you know, better to try and get the footage off so it's all in one place on my camera. So basically, this is what Octoprint looks like for me. I have done like a bunch of different modifications to it already, but as you can see, I can fully monitor the print. I'm showing you right now on my computer just because it's a larger screen, but what I have been doing is mainly using it on my phone. So I set it up that if I like go out and a print is like halfway through or whatever, I can check in on it, make sure it's not failing or whatever. I can remotely cancel the print. And one of the best features is that, um, like before, because obviously my computer is, um, like basically on the opposite side of the room as the printer. The printer's in the closet. So I didn't really ever have the option to be able to plug in the printer to my computer. So what I was doing is I was running everything off of an SD card that anytime I would like create a new file to print, I would have to take the SD card out and put it in my computer, which isn't a big deal. It's just I would have to, if I was printing something, I would have to wait for that print to finish before I could take the SD card out um, and then put it back in, yada yada. But with Octoprint, I can remotely just drag and drop files that save it onto the SD card that the Raspberry Pi is working off of. And because they're all in here, it means what I've been doing, I set it up that it notifies me. It sends me like a text-like notification to my phone when a print has finished. And so what I've been doing, because I'm printing a really massive, like a pretty multi-piece project right now, what I've been doing is that it will notify me when the the print is done. I will go get it off of the printer and then actually just go to the next file and print it from my phone. And it is amazing. It is making things so much faster. Like I said, it's a really what I'm working on now. It's a helmet, like a life-size helmet. So it's in multiple pieces. And so this is just speeding things up so much other than just generally the fact that I can now fully see what is happening um, on my printer at all times, no matter where I am. So if I'm like, if I like roll over at three in the morning and I'm paranoid that something's failed, I can just look at my phone now. I can turn on my LED lights um, on the printer. Obviously it's light out right now, so that's why you can see everything okay. But normally it's pretty dark in there. So I would turn on my LED lights and then actually um, check in on it with this on my phone. So yes, it's amazing. So if you are looking at this, I would like looking at a 3D printer, I would highly recommend to possibly looking into Octoprint. I mean, the setup, I don't think cost me more than like $100 to fully set this up. And it has changed how I have been able to 3D print. It even has like, it has all these really cool features. Um, this one I think I messed up, but basically this one's a G-code viewer. And what that means is, oh, it's loading now. What it means is it's literally, you can look at the layers that it's printing. So these are all the different layers and you can like see it in real time too. At some point I got it to show me um, like in real time what it was actually printing, which was awesome. But yeah, the other great thing is, I don't think I mentioned this before, but here I'll go zoom in here. I don't think I mentioned this before, but um, for some reason, like, Cura, which is the slicer that I use, which is basically what takes the 3D data and makes it a 3D printable file. Um, for some reason, the estimates in Cura were way off from what it actually took. And so I was, like, trying to guesstimate all the time, like, how much a print would actually take. Like, it would... Uh, like almost pretty much take like 50% more time than it said it was going to. And so you'd end up doing like this convoluted math of like looking at how much had already, like how much time had already passed and what percentage it was at. But with Octoprint, because it's actually plugged in, it not only s estimates how much time is left as opposed to on the machine, it just has how much time is elapsed, which is what this top number is here. But yeah, it estimates how much time and it's pr really accurate because it's actually looking at how many megabytes have been printed so far. So yes, I am super thrilled with Octoprint. It really wasn't as complicated to set up as I thought it was. I did have to do a bit of like, um, like terminal work, like, um, I wouldn't say coding, but just 
kind of coding, like setting things up, but there's lots of YouTube videos on it, and so I just watched one of those when I was setting it up, and it was all good. But yeah, that is my Octoprint setup. Forgot to mention, although I haven't set it up yet, there's like a whole bunch of time-lapse um, options. Um, I'm not sure if I'm really ever going to use them, just because I think like definitely Octolapse, it seems like it might take more print time just because it's kind of doing fancy things, like it moves the extruder over so that it like takes a still shot and it just kind of builds up. Um, it does look really cool, but um, I'm trying to print things as fast as possible, so not sure if I'm ever really going to, uh, not necessarily, I probably will use it, just not for this project other than this stuff is like really boring, but I'll show you now what I actually have printed. So these are the pieces that I already have gotten printed over the last day and a half-ish. Like I said, I've been keeping really on top of things with my notifications, so my printer has just been pumping out pieces. But yes, like I said, this is a helmet. It is in pieces that um, attach together with like biscuit types of ideas, but yeah, these pieces are really awesome looking right now. Obviously, I'm going to be like doing a lot of work on it um, once I actually attach it to get it all smoothed out and perfect. Um, but just generally on their own, they're looking great and they're really, really, really strong, which is awesome because obviously I don't want this to break ever. Um, but yeah, so basically right now it's printing another side of this. So just kind of have had that laid out. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been up to for the last couple of days. I wanted to end this vlog with this time lapse of a deer I made last month and just never ended up using the footage for, and also just kind of talking about how to get started in 3D printing, because I know it's a very daunting and massive subject to kind of dive into, and you know, people ask me like, how on earth did you even start to do this? And really, I just ended up doing tons of research online. You know, there's all of these different terms and specific things you need to kind of learn to be successful in 3D printing, and the best place to learn about that really is online. Um, same with figuring out what 3D printer you would maybe be interested in buying. Uh, there's lots of different lists about 3D printers that you can look at that are like like lists about the best 3D printers. Obviously, they vary in price a ton. Um, and if you find something like what I did, I ended up kind of knowing always that I would probably end up with a CR10. Um, and so I did end up looking at other avenues, but basically once you have a printer possibly in mind, then do more research about that printer. Like for instance, I knew how to change out all of the fans before I even owned or had bought it. Um, so definitely look up what people like about the printer, but also what people have a problem with. Um, because you will be less frustrated that way because they are kind of finicky and you need to know how to tinker. Basically, I ha did a ton of tinkering. In fact, uh, when I was setting this up, I spent two, the very, like the first two hours of setting it up, which I was taking my time, so you could probably do it faster. Um, but the first like two hours of setting it up, I had, was tinkering with it. Like I was basically doing a bunch of stuff that wasn't even in the actual instructions of how to set it up. I was just watching this YouTube video and this guy was going through all of the different things you want to check out. So yeah, definitely look up videos about different printers just do your research. Um, and, you know, there's tons of people online that have the same issues as you might with your printers or the same questions. So definitely just look around because you can probably find the answer pretty easily. But yeah, I think that's where I'm going to end this week's behind the studio video. I know this was pretty topical compared to what they might normally be. So I'm sorry if 3D printing isn't necessarily your interest, but like I said bef at the beginning, I have gotten a ton of questions about it, so I did want to kind of make a dedicated video on it that I could send people to if they ever were interested in things. But yes, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.